Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. I promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> And welcome. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on NBC News Radio, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Audible, and more. And this is a show about hope and happiness. Those of you who know who I am, Dr. Marissa, you know that I was introduced to Oprah as the Asian Oprah know that I want to talk about what's good about the world and how we help each other and what's good in the community and how we right some wrongs. And today's show is going to really focus on that. But before we get to my very special guests who are waiting in studio, today is September 27th and it's Ancestor Appreciation Day. It's also Family Day. Take a minute to appreciate your family today. Maybe compliment every person in your family with something nice. And it's also National Chocolate Milk Days. And then finally, Morning Show Host Day. I don't know who came up with that, but I am grateful. And because it is... <laughs> I get a little applause for that. I've been your morning host uh, at KCAA. This was a promotion for three months now. And before that, my weekly syndicated show. But I am so grateful to come at you every morning at 8 a.m. and try to get you to drink my rose-colored Kool-Aid so you can feel better in the morning. All right. Today, I have two very special guests that I met. A lot of you know, I do some beat reporting and I get to go on location and cover stories. I get to pick the stories that I want to cover. And I went to a protest and rally out in, and, uh, and they'll remind me uh, where I was because <laughs> I go all over. I, I was there and I was just touched by the story of Hilda, and then she brought her niece on, Emily, and they're going to talk about their brother and father, David Hordaz Jr., who was killed by the police, and they're here to tell me exactly what happened, and also, very importantly, how they're healing from this tragedy. So, without further ado, please welcome to my studio, Hilda and Emily. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. Hilda Pedroza is David's sister and Emily Ordaz. Is, did, did I pronounce that correctly? Ordaz? Yeah, okay. Ordaz, Ordaz. Ordaz. Thank you for correcting me. Emily Ordaz is David's daughter. Welcome to the studio. And first, I'm very sorry for your loss for both of you. And hopefully in this recounting too, um, as you share the story of what happened, that you also find some comfort because I know that all of my listeners are holding you with a big virtual hug as I am too. So let's start at the beginning and tell me what happened that day. Um, that day, my brother came home and he was telling me that he wanted to end his life. And this was March, um, March 14, 2021, this year. So it's been six months now since that happened. Uh, he came home and um, he didn't get off. He, he was in the car. So he asked me to go inside the car. But before that, he moved the knife that he had on the seat. So um, when I saw it, I started freaking out. I started getting nervous and I thought, okay, this is for real. At that moment, I started pleading with him to give it to me. He didn't want to. I I decided, let's go to the hospital. So we 
he drove actually, he was the one driving. Uh, I asked him to try to drive to the nearest hospital. Um, we went, but he didn't want to get off. We actually went to the hospital outside only to the parking lot, but never off the parking lot. Mm -hmm. so, now, was he, was he upset about work or is he was upset about, I mean, he, did he call you to tell you to come to the car or you just, how did that happen? Um, he was actually the day before already telling us, um, goodbyes. I'm sorry. Um, and we were talking with him on, I was actually on the phone with him all night, all night. Um, mm. and he was just driving around. He was just driving around. Uh, he, he finally said he was hungry and thirsty. So I told him, let me make something. And that's why I went into the car to give him food and oh, okay. water. Okay. And, okay. and so uh, once he didn't want to, we came back home. All our family was here. I thought, you know, that's going to help him. Um, and unfortunately, he still didn't want to give us the knife. He didn't want to give me the knife. I ended up calling um, because previously, 10 years before, um, we had called the sheriffs as well. They came um, without weapons at hand. They walked into our home. They walked him out. They searched him. They ended up taking him to a hospital where they diagnosed him with anxiety. So they did they put him in for a 5150? Uh, they didn't take him for a 5150 that time. They just okay. took him to the hospital. Um, okay. That was all that they did that but time. They, they obviously didn't think that he was going to be a danger to himself or others. Otherwise it would have been a 5150, correct? Correct. So, so 10 years earlier, this is the important history. He had, um, he wasn't happy. Right. And, and, and we did the, you, you did the family intervention. The, the sheriff thought he was okay. And then 10 years later, where did he get the knife? Um, it was one of our kitchen knives. It was a regular uh, kitchen knife. It wasn't anything uh, like a machete, a machete. Or like a oh. meat one. It was just a regular kitchen knife that anybody would have at their home. Uh, um, a big one? No, like it was a, a maybe a big, a regular, what you would use to cut your tomatoes. Okay. Um, yeah, the sheriff okay. claimed that it's a 12 inch knife. There's no way it's 12 inches. Um, okay. My family's even said that it was barely able to cut through bread at some, t at some point. So just, just okay. to give you a better idea. Right, that. right, right. Yeah. Okay, great. Continue, please. Thank you. Um, so at that time, uh, I decided to call the sheriff's station. Uh, I asked, and my words were, um, I need some guidance. Can you help me? My brother is trying to hurt himself. Um, they asked me if he had a weapon, and I said yes. And actually, David was saying yes because he was. I had my phone on speaker, and he was answering the questions that they were asking. And mm. for me, now um, thinking about it, I feel that that was his way of asking for help as well, because he mm -hmm. was in in a state where he wanted to uh, commit suicide, but at the same time, he was aware of what he was saying and doing. Um, so. As soon as they get here, I hang up with the operator. I they get here, and with the ask, with the with the sirens and everything. Correct. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, they get here. Maybe about four cars get here. Um, they say they already knew my brother's name, so they start saying, "David, get off the car." Um, we both get off the car, but he gets off first before I do. When I when I get off, I see guns pointed at me. I believe I I'm I'm in shock at that moment. I had never seen. First of all, I had never seen a weapon in real life, a gun. Second of all, being pointed at me and at my brother, um, right. I think I froze there. And the first thing I thought was like, I need to come to my comfort zone, which is my my home. So I didn't come inside the house, but I was in our yard outside mm -hmm. along with my parents mm -hmm. and um, my siblings. So they were all there. They were all there trying to get David out of the car in the first place. And um, so. Correct. I'm trying to picture this. Yes. Um, so actually they weren't there when David was there in the car right away until after I called the, the police, I told them, that's it. I called the police. I need you guys to come out here. Um, okay. 
we we need more help. It's out of my hands already. Um, mm -hmm. So at this time, they were both they were all out there, but we were all pleading for David to come and towards us to drop the knife um, because they they were they already had their guns drawn at him since the moment we got off the car. Mm. And well, he ended up coming towards us. And we feel that because we were calling at him, he was coming towards us. Um, but there was this point where um, I guess they felt like they had to shoot him. And they shoot him. For, was he turned towards you? He was turned towards us. So they shot him in the back? No. Well, the, the fact is that they, they moved us. They moved us from where we were at on the side. We were side side to side to him but then they told us to move to get out of the line of fire not until after do i think about it they already knew they were going to shoot him because they told him they told us to move away from the line of fire get back get back so at this time we're moving and now we're parallel instead of being parallel with david now we're parallel with the with the deputies mm -hmm. um and so he's coming this way which is the same way where the deputies are at oh. and they ended up shooting him he he did have the knife. He, like I said, he never raised it. He never pointed it at anyone right. else. Um, he ends up dropping it and shots still keep coming. Uh, he was shot 12 times. Oh. And actually he was shot 11 times. And then you could hear in the video where I scream, stop, stop. And one sheriff, one deputy still does one more shot and that's when we saw him dying in front of our eyes oh. he still had life in, in him until that one last shot mm. oh my god my parents are there and you know my heart goes out to my parents because they had witnessed this uh, oh. my parents are elderly already um <laughs> sorry i just hit that by accident i am so sorry oh my god i'm i can't even imagine i cannot i i'm so it was very hard it was very traumatizing it was i'm insane. so sorry i am so and thank you for for you know, being so brave to actually tell the story again, it cannot be easy. It cannot, I mean, do you, do you, you have nightmares, I'm sure for a while at least. And, and, and I hope you know that you did everything you could, you did everything you could. And, and for that, I'm, you know, I'm grateful to you. I'm sure your niece is grateful to you. And, and I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I, I'm now I'm really pissed. <laughs> I mean, I was mad when I, I first heard of it, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't know all the, 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 the details. So, okay. So then, and let's just take a, a, a minute and take a breath. I I'm known for taking breaths because I think it's a really good way to connect. So let's just take a deep breath in through the nose I'm releasing, oh, I'm releasing all the comfort and love and peace to your family right now. Thank you. Um, just, just to, to heal. And, and the good news is I know where he is. He's with my dad. He's on the other side. He's in heaven, you know, and he's not in pain and he's not in turmoil, which is wonderful. But, but yes, justice has to be done because you were there. You saw what happened. And that was not okay. That was not okay. Not at any level was this okay. All right. So then you're in shock. You run to your brother. Your parents run to your brother's body. Do they let you do that? No, they, didn't they don't do allow that. us. The first one to run out of the fence is my dad. And they mm. put their hands on him to stop him. They don't mm -hmm. allow him. And I, I remember seeing the knife on the floor and I, I go and I kick it. I open the door to kick it. And I said, there, help him, help him. Yes, I had already seen that, um, realized that he was dead, but I still wanted help for him. Yeah, and yeah. They, they, they still, they're more concerned about us now than him. I'm sure they knew that he was dead. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they start pushing us. They start uh, fighting with us with words, um, you know, 
and um, we're hysterical. We're hysterical. I'm sure, we're, as we're, you we're should be. Crazy. We're going crazy at that moment. Finally, after like two long minutes that seemed like forever, the paramedics mm -hmm. were already standing at halt. They were already standing about um, 15 feet from mm -hmm. the sheriffs or the mm -hmm. deputies that were there, the cars. Mm -hmm. um, finally, after those two long minutes, they come and they take him away after they mm -hmm. They checked his body, I guess, if he didn't have any other weapons, I don't know. Um, oh. And then finally they get him help and they take him away. Um, we're going to have to break for the uh, news right now. But uh, when we come back, we're, we're going to continue with uh, Hilda, the sister of David Ordaz Jr., who was murdered by the sheriff's department. Um, when we come back, stay tuned here. This is Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It. Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa at the morning show on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. <laughs> Back your life with Dr. Marisha Pay. And welcome back. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on CNBC and NBC News Radio Channel, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. And of course, on my YouTube channel, with all 540 shows, but who's counting? And you'll also, if you free subscribe there, get an alert every morning at eight for this show about hope and happiness and my red carpet playlist, including interviews with Halle Berry, John Travolta, Quincy Jones, and more. Today is a tough show. And if you tuned in earlier, you heard the account from David Ordaz's sister, Hilda, who was there desperately trying to get help for her brother, who was not doing well, had a knife, was looking for guidance. And unfortunately, the help she got was not help. Uh, her brother died that day uh, at the hands of the sheriff's 12 shots. And uh, she and her niece, David's daughter, are here to talk about what happened, and now talking about justice, and then talking about healing from this tragedy. So welcome back to the studio, Hilda. Welcome back to the studio, Hilda and Emily. So now the paramedics have taken your brother away, his body. Then what happened? And I called back to check up on him. And the doctor that I spoke to says, um, you need to come right away. We need to see you in person. I told her the cops are not letting us go out of our home. Uh, it seemed to us like we were under arrest inside of our own home. We weren't allowed to go anywhere. And she said, well, let me talk to one of the officers. Um, I tend to have my phone on speaker all the time. Um, and I have it on speaker and I hand it to one of the officers that's there. And she says, I really need them to come because I need to tell them in person that their loved one has passed. And that's how we confirmed it. And he said, well, you just said it because you're in speaker and uh, there's no need for them to go. So that's how we confirmed that he was dead. And oh. they're here for many hours. And um, in reality, we weren't hungry, but family was was worried about us and they have food. They don't allow them to come with food. Um, they, they, one of them said, one of the investigators said, you should be thankful I'm letting, I'm bringing you the food. Remember this later on, I brought you food. So it was the food our family members have brought. 
us, but he was good enough to bring it to us. He was so nice as to let them bring the food over here. But um, no, none of our family was allowed to come in or we weren't allowed to go out. Um, so it was then, you and your parents, that's it? My parents, my siblings, all my siblings were here. Um, my children, my brother's children, they were all here and they all witnessed what happened as well. And we're talking about minors. Thankfully, Emily wasn't here um, that day. Um, they did let Emily and um, her mom come in and um, be here with us. And mm -hmm. I told her, you know, you have to make sure to tell them that's your dad. That's that's yeah. your, you have to be here. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. We were there that day. We weren't there when it happened. We were there, what, a couple hours after. I'm glad I had the opportunity to be there with my family, you know, uh, the day of that was a very it was it was a special moment to be able to walk in um you know even though it was pretty tragic uh i had an investigator tell me that um the reason why they weren't letting us in at first was because there was evidence still left on the floor and so i had to watch out with where i was walking so i'm walking to the house that i grew up in and there's a knife on the floor my dad's hat and a splatter of blood on, on the sidewalk and mm -hmm. I have to walk past that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I think it was a very special moment to be able to come and see my family after something so tragic happened. Absolutely. Um, ha happens like that, it's, it's, uh, it's, it was a great feeling to be able to be like reunited with my family that way. Um, but yeah, I think it was, it was very, I mean, it was shocking even at the end of the day, um, we, I had to watch my dad's blood get washed off the sidewalk. It was, it was, uh, you know, not seeing it. I'm thankful for that. Right. I, I've right. seen it through video. Um, yeah. I've seen it. Um, yeah, I've seen it through video and I had to be there after everything. And I, but I still cannot imagine what it would be like to have to watch it happen. So, you know, I think my, uh, my, the a very strong woman to still be able to come on to shows like this and be in interviews and uh, tell her story that way. Oh, that's beautiful. And we're going to come back after the weather and sports this time to hear more of what happened to both uh, Emily's father and why they're going for justice. They have every right to go for justice uh, with Hilda's brother. And then I was struck, and the, the main reason I wanted to talk to Hilda was I was so impressed with her words about mental health, her own mental health, what she did to heal from tragedy, which is why I wanted her to talk, because I think it's so important for those who have gone through it and have come out the other side to share, because they're in a unique position to help anyone else who's going through a tough time right now from some kind of tragedy. So that and more when we come back to Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It, Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa, The Morning Show here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. <laughs> Back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. And we're back. You're tuned in to take my advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on KCAA, NBC News Radio, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. All the major platforms, including Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Audible, and then on my YouTube channel. And today is a special day. I have live in studio two very important women. 
who have taken a tragedy that happened to their brother and father and are now looking for justice as well as healing. So please welcome back Hilda Pedroza and Emily Ordaz to the studio. Hilda, uh, Emily, you just finished speaking and gave your auntie a very nice compliment. And I saw the little bit of, uh, you know, head on shoulder, which was so cute when we went on break. And, and I just love it's perfect for family day. Today is family day, right? So, so you're doing what you're supposed to do. But uh, how, how, I, I mean, obviously, the support of family is so important right now for all of you. I watched your dad give a statement. You, uh, um, you know, you interpreted for him in front of the, we had CBS there that day, KTLA, we had all the major news stations there. And, um, you know, tell me who, who was there who were, were watching and, and how are your parents holding up there? How old are they? Um, my mom is 70 and my dad is 69. Okay. And I am very grateful that they were both willing to take, uh, therapy. They're, they're taking talk therapy <clears throat> because, you know, as uh, I spoke that day about, um, mental health being sort of a taboo for us, something that you don't speak. And in our culture, we tend to keep our things to ourselves within the family you know you don't air out the the dirty laundry you chinese is the same <laughs> chinese is absolutely the same i i am a constant disappointment to my <laughs> my culture because i can't keep my mouth shut so yes. so that i totally get that i totally get yes. that so yes. but that's something we need to change you know and i, I feel that david's brought that to us you know that we need to change that that's why we decided to do this march and rally in honor of him um, because it's we need to do something we can't just stay like this we we need to change if we could our block our 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 neighbors were outside when all this happened so i thought about them because um our neighbors don't talk about it and neither do we with our neighbors they they act like nothing happened and i I don't blame them. It's something very hard to speak about. Um, we also lived in these homes for the past 30 years. So they saw David since he was little. He was three years old when we moved in and they saw his kids grow up. So I can only imagine how they felt. Um, and how so many kids? How three, many kids? Three, three kids? Three. So are you the oldest, yeah. Emily? Yeah, you act like you're the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> and were your brothers and sisters there? No, no. Thank no, you. okay. So all three of you were not there, which is a blessing, yeah. right? And then, um, so you, were your mom and dad separated? Is that why you're, you're, you were not there with your? Yeah. Yes, your we, okay. we, didn't, we don't live here. Uh, okay, you don't there. live there. Okay, but but you had a relationship with your father. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. And then how many kids do you have, Hilda? I have four kids. Um, have four kids. Yes, but my old, my, I have two that are adult and two that are minor. And, okay. Um, Who was the little boy? Who was the cute little boy that was there? That was my little brother. Oh, <laughs> David's the third. Yeah, David's the third. <laughs> oh, is, his name's David too? Uh -huh. David the third. So he's David the third. Oh, yeah. he was adorable. <laughs> it was adorable. So yeah, because he, he went to your 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 mom, Hilda. He ran to you. So I knew that was the grandma. Oh, okay. To my mom. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think so. I think so. So um, all right. So who were your kids there? Were they watching? Uh, my 13-year-old was. He was watching from the window. Oh. Uh, my brother's two. Uh, minor children were also uh, there. They were watching behind the car that we had in the driveway. Mm. And so was his wife. Um, but way in the front and by the fence, it was um, uh, all the siblings and my parents. Mm. How many siblings do you have? I have one sister and uh, three brothers with wow. David. Okay. But now we have two. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And they were all there with their they kids trying to desperately trying to to help david oh, right. I, so okay so i'm trying to 
manage my own piss offedness right now. So, so, okay. So then you're lucky to get your food by the investigator. And then, um, so now the process you're, you're mourning and you are trying to deal with the, you're in shock. Obviously your brother's dead. You never thought this would happen. You didn't want it to happen. Then what happened? Um, for me personally, it was just hard. I was trying not to, I was isolating myself, even from my own family. I was isolating from them. I just wanted to be in my room. And it was very hard to continue with this, to even do anything. Um, and, and trying to be physically here for my family. Um, but it was so hard. The second day after it happened, I thought about uh, my own mental health. And that's because I went through my own depression in 09. Um, and I didn't want to go through it again. <clears throat> so I said, I need to help myself now. Um, I struggled a lot to get any mental health. I was getting um, therapy with my insurance once a month. Um, I tried, I needed something more. I could, I knew myself, I knew that it was, it was helping me, but it wasn't doing what it was supposed to because I needed more. Um, so I started, uh, going to the nonprofits around here and they tell me, well, you need medical and I don't qualify for medical. Um, so they couldn't help me. Mm. Uh, so I started getting involved with, uh, say their names LA, which is, um, I get a, a group of families um, who have gone through the same thing. And I found a home. I found a home there. I belong there. Unfortunately, they have become our family yeah. now. A family, mm. you know, but um, it's, it's uh, at least something that we have. We have a bond with all the other families and um, activists who have been helping us for the last six months, people that were there the day it happened, they didn't even know us and they mm -hmm. were there that day to, to support us. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you and know, this is, this is Say Their Names organization. Say yeah. Their Names LA. LA, yes. Say Their Names LA. And, yes. and this is a community, a nonprofit, obviously, to. You know what? It's not even an organization. It's just a group, a group of impacted families mm. who have gone through similar things. Um, and and it's just the support that you feel within each other, um, you know. Um, That's wonderful. That and, is absolutely wonderful. So if you are, are being triggered or you can relate to what Hilda and Emily have gone through, say their names dot say their names LA dot org. Yes. Uh, you could just find them on Instagram actually mm -hmm. at Instagram. Say their names LA. Okay. Of course. The younger generation. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Beautiful. And so they became your healing center or your 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 community of healing. Correct. So I, I reached out to one of the one of the family members who had befriended me. Um, she is the aunt of Anthony Vargas, who was also killed here in East L.A. Um, uh, two years before my brother. So she went through all of this. And I asked one day I was just I had a lot of anxiety and I couldn't take it. I, I didn't know what else to do. And I, I reached out to her and I told her, you know, this is how I feel. And she told me, you know what? There's this application um, that you need to sign up for. And this is uh, DPN, uh, fill it out and they give you services for free. And um, what DPN, does DPN stand for? Dignity and Power Now. Dignity and Power I knew Now. that, but I wanted you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, I mean, I hadn't heard of it until you said it Okay. When, in the interview. So that's w fabulous. Dignity. I played that little clip, by the way, oh, uh, of yours uh, on my social media. So <laughs> yeah, dignity and power now. Beautiful. So, so then. 
that so qualified you. There is where I signed up and within three days, um, I had a therapist and um, we're, I'm having uh, therapy once uh, a week. And I'm not going to tell you that I'm completely healed and hallelujah, you know, a miracle <laughs> happened, but it has helped me a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, with your history of depression on top of, you know, so there's, there might be a little, some family, you know, uh, uh, predisposition, I call it, doesn't mean you're going to get it. So Emily, don't worry. You know, it's not a curse or anything, but, uh, you know, family genetics or learned behavior, there's maybe some predisposition, but the good news is there's help. Yes. And, you know, as you just mentioned, look at your, look at your aunt. She is, uh, you know, you, you have a purpose in all of this. Um, you, you're the guide now you are, you are providing guidance. So you don't have to ask for guidance anymore. That's your new middle name guide. Yeah. So, and that's so beautiful. So sorry, but, um, you know, I just wanted to put it out there that through this march that we had, um, when we went flyering, we had uh, all the uh, suicide prevention numbers that we could get on the flyer. So I was telling all our neighbors, get all the help that you can. If you don't need it, have keep this. Don't even attend the march if you can't. I want you to keep these numbers handy. We did a, a QR um QR code uh, where they could go straight into the uh, that application that I filled out myself. We made it in Spanish and in English, so um, no language barrier there. Um, and we just want help for our community. I, we want this to be normalized. We want people to be talking about it, um, and that's why I feel so comfortable talking about it because if I don't start, I need to start in order for everyone else to start talking about it, that it's okay to be depressed and it's okay to have anxiety and to have these nightmares and these triggers that I have now, but there's a way to cope with them. There's hope there. There's ways to get help. We just need to look for them. So if you've just tuned in, you just heard uh, an amazing, beautiful, break your heart open from tragedy, uh, guide and loving words and uh, help in healing from Hilda Pedroza. And for that and the strength of Emily Ordaz and her loss of her dad and yet her recognition of the healing that's happening. I'm giving both of you Dr. Marissa's Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award. And I don't give this to all my guests. So enjoy this applause because it's just for you. And I mean that with all my heart. I just love the way you've taken this tragedy and you've made it uh, into a healing, not just for yourself, but for your community. And what's the Spanish word you used in the interview? I'm doing this for my raza. That's it. I knew there was a word. So I love that word. That's like Ohana for Hawaiian, you know, family and uh, your clan, your tribe. Raza. I'm going to use that from now on. <laughs> So I, 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 you're part of my rasa and I'm part of yours. So, so this is, this is what we do when, when sh shift happens, when shiitake happens, we use it as fertilizer to heal and grow the seed that needs to. So I love the fact that, you know, you, you, you've also educated people on what a 5150 is and, you know, what to do when you're anxious. And, you know, you've, you now disseminated the information about suicide hotline and all of that. And I do, I absolutely agree with you that, you know, uh, some cultures have a very difficult time with asking for help. You know, it's a matter of, machismo or, or mm -hmm. privacy or, you know, don't air your dirty laundry. I know for sure, you know, Chinese is very like that. You don't talk about what's wrong. You don't let people know that you don't have it together. Uh, it, China didn't even recognize psychology until not that long ago. So, so, and I, and I didn't realize that, uh, the, the Latino culture also had similar, 
similar stuff. Emily, you're, you're, you're nodding your head. So yeah, talk to yeah. me about that. Yeah. Even at a, 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 an age like mine, uh, I'm 15. So I think even just with 15 years of, of observing our culture and realizing that um, it's not okay for especially men to talk about the struggles that they're going through. And I, I've even spoke about that on a, a live that we had pretty recently on Instagram that um, in our culture, it's not okay for men to talk about their mental illness. And um, I, you, you know, because they're expected to uh, provide for their families and they're expected to, you know, man up and it's, it's definitely not okay. I have a little brother, you know, as you know, and um, I, I worry for him because it's, it's not okay for him to grow up in a culture that uh, doesn't promote uh, health. I think uh, mental health is very important. It's just as important as, you know, our physical health. I think that we need to start making it okay for everybody to talk about their mental illness. Um, even kids at my age, kids at my little brother's age, he's nine, you know, uh, can struggle with mental illness. And I think it's it should be okay to talk about it. Well, I'm grateful to our younger generation for not saying yes, sir, yes, ma'am, to all the things just because someone's older, that we you're actually saying, hey, oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> I, I don't want to be labeled that way, or I don't want to be, you know, belong to this particular. So that's good. It is very good. And I, I encourage you and applaud you for being part of this and and not being silent and and not saying i just have to get over this because this is there's nothing to get over here you know this is all part of you know as as much as it doesn't look like a friendly universe with what happened um i i believe in a friendly universe that i don't there's nothing that happens without a, a beautiful reason and you two are both testaments of that so let's get to the let's get to the other part. So now you we 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 know that um, I'm glad that you are not in full commando anger because full commando anger is also not healing. So I'm always um, encouraging people to feel the pain, and you know there's things you can do to process that in what you're doing with the lawyers, but first and fundamentally to feel love, not maybe love for them, but love, just hold on to that love, hold on to the love for yourself to heal. So I'm glad you're doing that. And at the same time, what are we doing now with um, justice? Uh, well, in reality, for justice, we're leaving that to the lawyers. Um, we are also, we have a justice page for David on Instagram, um, where we are talking about other people. Um, we are also talking about mental health and um, what's next for us, what, how our case is going or where we're at. Um, just, you know, to get support and give support as well to others. Um Where's that page? It's at Justice for David Orodas Jr. on Instagram. Okay. So it's just on Instagram. Yes. Well, that's where most of the people are now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So at Justice for David Ordaz Jr. Yes. Right. right. So hashtag that as well. Yes. I think that's hashtag. That's the one I used that y'all saw. <laughs> Beautiful. So what can we do to support you? So uh, there's those out there, you know, I'm always yelling at all of my listeners and more. Don't just shake your head. When you see something you don't like, don't just shake your head, do something. So if someone wants to do something to help, what do they do? I think we should start at our own homes. Let's start there. Um, let's talk about mental health within your own home. Um, Let's let's advocate for it. Um, whenever you see someone who needs it, um, give them any resources that you might have, and and um, if not, let's look for it. Let's let's not call the police for 
anything. Um, I've seen when uh, neighbors call on transients, homeless, they call the police on them. We don't know what they're doing to them when they take them. Um, why not give them some water instead? Give them some food, help them. Um, let's, let's hear other people who have gone through this, not just our story, but other people. And let's be there for them. Um, let's support them in any way that we can. Uh, being in the rallies, being um, different things, following their pages as well. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I wanted to say something. Else. Yes, please. Um, I want to tell everybody that this is something urgent. This is very urgent. You don't think that it is until it happens to you. And I want uh, everybody to know that calling the cops on somebody is very dangerous. And obviously, my dad was an example of that. Um, it can get somebody killed. So like uh, my Dia said, uh, we don't know, well, we do actually know, we know that they that the police, they send mentally ill people to jail and they treat them unjustly. Um, I just learned yesterday that they actually will shackle mentally ill people, they'll tether them. And uh, there was one person that was even shackled for up to 60 hours. And that's wrong because that was, probably so probably somebody called the cops on them right and and just said well whatever with them went on with their lives and they didn't even know that this person was was uh being treated unfairly so i think that we do definitely need to think about it and we need to uh start start talking to our own family members because it's it's more urgent than you think you don't you don't think that it's a, a big issue and, and until it happens to you and you're going to regret it and you don't want to be in our situation and we don't want anyone else to be in mm, it. Mm, mm, beautiful. How many, you've been in that group. How, how, how prevalent is this? How many people are we talking about in similar situations as you? Um, in, in the group that we're in and say their names LA, um, we have over 40 families, but there's one that is very similar to us. It happened in their home as well, in their driveway. And we have gotten very close to them because it feels like we they were know. in the same place. Exactly. They know. But, um, yeah. All the families, they understand. Um, there's there's um, different families who have gone through worse, who have been in this fight for years mm -hmm. um, and have made it easier for us. Um, and it's a family, like we say, that we wish no one would be part of, but yeah. we're here for each other. Yeah. I just yeah. want to uh, shine light on the family that she mentioned. Uh, his name was Marco Vasquez Jr. And his children actually witnessed his death. So that's probably one of the only differences in in um, mm -hmm. our loved one's cases that his children, his daughters saw him pass and his and his infant children saw him pass and i think that um it's i think that everybody needs to go uh look at their story too you can find them on instagram at justice for marco vasquez jr wonderful yeah and please let them know i i'm happy to have them on the show as well to share their story because you're right you're right uh, people need to know i didn't know about this if you hadn't done the rally i wouldn't have known you know, I try not to listen to the news. <laughs> I'm on the news, but I try not to listen because I don't want, but it's, it's real and it's happening and it's not right. So I have a bit of good news. Hopefully uh, I have a friend who's been on, she did my uh, series on it's not black and white, or is it after George Floyd was murdered? And uh, she is part of a committee in LA that is actively uh, changing the response to mental health calls so they don't send out police with guns. So that's good news, right? They're actually doing that. The other good news is I interviewed uh, Seal Beach Police. They have an, a sticker that uh, you can have in your window to alert the police that someone who, you know, has had mental health episodes lives there so that they know not to draw the guns and all of that. So it's not a lot, it's not enough, but at least it's a start. At yeah, least it's, it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate that we have to have a sticker put on our homes to let officers know to not bring their guns out, but it's a step forward. So yeah. 
Yeah, I'm I'm advocating that they change from protect and serve to serve and protect. That's my little, uh, I would love to see that change. But thank you so much. Um, the last question I always ask my guests is to who or what are you most grateful for? My parents. My parents, for them, for, for their strength. Um, it, it's hard for them um, to be out there and mm-hmm. believe me, I don't want to be in their shoes ever. But Please give them my love. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Their, for sure. their strength and them. Yeah. Um, I'd say I'm most grateful for my family for being there for me for the last six months to uh, uh, all the activists and other families who've, other impacted families that, that have been through the same thing we have for being there for us also. But um, especially uh, my dad, I think that he's given us so much more knowledge on the uh, the things that we need to know to, to move forward. And um, yes, that, that, that's all. <laughs> wow, it's beautiful. Thank you. I know where he is. He's with my dad. My dad and, and uh, your dad are probably playing some kind of card game and uh, loving us from the other side in a way that they couldn't love us from here. And so I hold that for you, Emily, and, uh, and for you as well, Hilda. And thank you so much for coming and sharing your story, your heart. I, I felt it, and I so appreciate it. All right, that's, that's it for today's very heartfelt show on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show, reminding you that it's all about balance. Peace in, peace out world peace through inner peace. And don't forget, have the best day ever.